Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 43 of my Hulkbuster project. I'm not going to repeat what happened in part 42A, which was me testing Hulkbuster at DEF CON. I did a bit of analysis afterwards. If you haven't seen that video, look back and watch it. I'm just going to get on with it. So just to reiterate that Hulkbuster is still a main project. Last week was the first part of Project Ultron, which is the other main project. I also have some Star Wars stuff going on, which is going to take a slightly lower priority. I really want to get this Hulkbuster sorted out so I can walk in it, which I'm hoping to do the majority of in this video. So basically, I'm going to be taking all the panels off the leg here and uh, trying to free up my ankles a bit and then do some walking testing. So let's get on with it. In my ankle and in the leg, I've got several hinges. I can unlock the knees and I can move the knee like this, which works fine. And I can also move my fake toe, which is about 30 centimeters below my foot and pivots around this point. The problem I had walking in it was that I'm basically, I couldn't shift my weight to one side to take a leap of faith to pivot over this hinge here, which I have really no control over with my own ankles. So the plan today is to cut along here and try and free up my ankle so it can move in all directions. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this extra hinge piece or whether that's really going to confuse me having that and my real ankle. I also need to decide if I can actually move my ankles enough in these snowboard boots with the bindings that currently hold my feet in. So I'm going to take all of these panels off and cut the foot off and try walking on it basically as a flat block with my feet. On the inside here I've got lots of 3D printed frames uh, basically which hold all of the foam panels on if you remember me putting this together so I can just unscrew this from the wood all the way around. Hopefully this all comes off in one piece. That was fairly easy, it's now time to take a saw to the wood here and I'm basically literally just going to cut off across here and do that on both sides to uh, remove the leg and then I'm just going to try walking with boxes on my feet and see what we need to do about this, if anything. So I've cut the feet off, as you can see, I've still got that sort of action there, so I can pivot over and I'm now going to walk in these and see if that's actually useful or whether I just screw it up and just leave myself with blocks. So I've got my snowboard boots on, let's just step in. Alright, so obviously what I couldn't do before was lean side to side to take my weight off, so now I can, so I've got my ankles back. Um, I can step forward enough and, yeah, in fact, so actually walking quite naturally with that toe works. Um, in a moment I'm going to carry the torso to see if I can actually do this. But um, so far this feels much better, of course, actually being able to lean my legs right over at this angle to take a step. And um, I think I'm going to keep those fake toes there so they're quite good for action poses, like doing this sort of thing. I just need that uh, ankle articulation, so yeah, it's actually quite useful to have that toe rather than being solid. So it gives as I come on to the next one. So that feels pretty good. So now let's pick up the torso and see how that looks. So that's uh, immediately much, much easier than when I was doing the testing before without the arms on, albeit without the legs. But um, I really don't need to lean much side to side now to take my foot off and actually get to walk quite naturally. So even with small steps, I can actually walk in here. So I haven't got the arms and the shoulder belt sticking out. Uh, but this is just, you know, this is quite natural walking. I'm taking quite small steps, but 
Now I can uh, without trying to scut red onto the ceiling anymore. Do all of the things. And uh, yeah, walk backwards so I don't feel at all like I'm going to overbalance forward onto my toes here. I can probably do this. This is really quite comfortable, so yeah, even with small steps, this is a lot better. So this looks like a good approach, we just need to sort out those legs. So that felt pretty good, it was actually pretty easy to pick the torso up and put it on and put it back down again afterwards on my own. So if I had any sense, what I'd of course do is build a lightweight frame to hold the foam leg parts, which weigh next to nothing, um, and then I'd just sort of put all this on as I go. So I'd get into my feet, attach this thing to whatever, and then I'd have someone pass me up the torso, put it on, um, and then I'd walk around in it, and then I'd put the torso down, take all the legs off and climb out of the feet. Um, what I really wanted to do though, as I did before, was display the suit all in one piece and have it all locked up, then climb into it, unlock the joints and walk around and leave it wherever I want. And that was the original premise of the suit. Um, so the basic frame was one of the first things I designed and built. I'm quite glad that my um, pivoting ankle idea is actually of some use in the end. But what I really need to do is somehow reattach these pieces with a hinge and that needs to be a hinge that moves backwards and forwards and also moves left and right and it can be locked up so that I can put the suit down um, and leave it standing there. It's also got to be really secure so I actually had extra bits of wood clamped into the back of the suit when it was being displayed at DEF CON and I wasn't basically fizzling, physically holding onto it so they didn't fall on anyone. Having it pivot at the ankles when it's not supposed to will result in the entire suit falling flat onto people which will be really bad. So we need to make something extremely secure for this mechanism. It's a couple of days later, so I've thought this through quite a bit. The plan is going to be to get these big brackets that I got, which are for joist hanging, basically, for building houses. Um, bolt one of these in each side, so I need to cut it up a bit so it fits down the side of my snowboard binding on the outside. And this is gonna have a big peg in it, which is gonna be an M12 steel piece of studding with lock nuts on either side that will make a pivot point on one side. Um, that's going to be the actual articulation point so the leg will be able to rotate round and also move this way on it. And then on the other side to lock it I'm going to have two big steel tubes or not that big but steel tubes that lock down and that will make three points of um, locking so then obviously the leg won't be able to move in any directions so that's how it's going to get locked. But first of all, I need to cut away some of the wood so that the um, ankle joint is flexible and get this installed and see how that works with me just holding the legs up and walking along. So there are my two pins, this one is the main pivot which the uh, top is going to rest onto so it can move all around. The bottom one is to have a bungee that holds the ankle together so they don't get separated so that will hook around that or whatever's on there in the end. Um, this might have to get turned around so it faces inwards although I don't want it to um, rub on my ankles and that's because at the moment if I push really hard this thing will tip up. But that's mainly because um, of course there's a massive gap under here so I could make this plate wider. Um, and then it would be less prone to tipping, so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, we're going to do some testing and see how this works, but first I have to cut a plate to interlock with it.
So as crude as it is, um, I think that's a pretty good solution. This is definitely strong enough to support the suit when it's standing there. I do need to sort out this tipping over issue, but uh, for now I'm going to give it a test and try and walk in them. What I ideally want is a gimbal right in the middle here that's equally loaded on each side. Um, the problem is though my leg is in the way of course, so that would have to go above the toe. And that then means that when I pick up my leg, the whole weight of the uh, leg is pushing my toe down. So that puts a lot of load on my foot trying to lift the suit up, which I don't really want to do. So it really needs to be around my ankle point so it's just pulling down on my leg. And that's the reason I've put this here. So um, the other thing is, of course, the leg is now displaced slightly to this side. Um, that's okay, really, though, because it brings the feet a bit further out. Um, that stops those banging together when I'm walking, so that's not bad in itself. We might have to realign the um, covers made of foam to put those back in the right place, but we'll be doing that in the future. So let me get in and see if I can actually hold those legs up and walk along reasonably well. Right, so obviously these are normally held up in bungees to the torso, which I've got just here. Alright, so this is feeling much better. I need to do something, whoops, about holding those on, probably with a some sort of in fact let me stop and put some nuts on there to hold them because they're just going to fall off otherwise. Obviously there's no bungee restraining it at the moment. So I've put some bolts in that hold those ankles together now. They may have those on or they may clip on and have a bungee that holds them. I've also got this bungee around my neck, which I'm going to hook onto the two bungees to um, sort of simulate where the torso would be holding the legs up. Obviously when I let go of the knee latches, they just fall down otherwise, which makes it quite tricky for testing. So let's try again. So uh, yeah, this bungee's not really up to it. They're a lot tighter when they're attached to the torso. But um, yeah, ultimately, ultimately I'm a lot more uh, able to move around in this, apart from the wooden things banging together. A lot of that is my special toe flip mechanism, which I need to put more dampening on, a big block of foam in the back. The other issue is here, of course, these are twisting. I need to do something about that, but that's probably going to involve um, anchoring them down at the bottom a bit more with some more bungee cord to just sort of hold them and stop them twisting, possibly at the top as well. So uh, ultimately though, obviously I can walk in this, which is pretty good. I can just get them to stay stable. Perhaps I'll have two bungees coming to the torso and several down to the feet. A bit like... Uh, well, actually, being able to twist my ankle is not such a bad thing. So the flexibility is pretty good. All right. Cool, I think that's pretty good so far. I think that's the answer. I'm pretty happy with the way that's going. That's all I'm going to do in this part. Next time, I'm going to be making those ankle latches which I really need to give some more thought to. It's quite important for safety reasons, they don't break. And I think that's gonna involve at least one steel tube dropping down from the shin onto the foot there, so that it locks it and it can't move in any direction. So it'll be constrained at the top and bottom. That also needs to lock in place ideally, although gravity will hold it down, it needs a lock to hold it up so it doesn't fall down when I'm walking. Then hopefully I'll be able to get back on these pieces 
and we can put the whole thing back together and I should be able to try walking in here with the torso now that I can move a little bit I don't have to rock all the way over like I was planning to to try and walk so don't forget to check back next time for more updates on this next week is another Project Ultron update so have a look on that if you haven't watched part one that was last week's video and don't forget to subscribe to me on social media for sneak peeks and updates the links are in the description to this video